Ethereum is dying? The truth about each is vibe session and the rise of layer two seconds. Hey, crypto crew! Welcome back to Bitspools. It's your boy Andrew here bringing you the hottest crypto news from the trenches. Today we're diving deep into the world of Ethereum and its future and let me tell you, things are getting interesting. First up, we have some intriguing thoughts from Michael Anderson, co-founder of Framework Ventures. He's got a theory that ETFs could break the cycle of volatility that's been plaguing the crypto market. Think about it. When ETH ETFs get the green light from the SEC, we could see a shift in how people trade. Instead of selling Bitcoin to buy Ethereum or Ethereum to jump into some new altcoin, people might just hold on to their assets. That could mean smoother sailing for the market, less of. That wild price fluctuation we've been seeing. But before you start celebrating a new era of calm, hold your horses. We still have those pesky Ethereum killers lurking around. While Anderson believes that L2S Layer 2s are paving the way for a future where we barely even notice Ethereum, he's also keeping an eye on some new projects, Barachain and Monad. These guys are definitely worth keeping an eye on. Speaking of L2S, we're entering a bit of a transition period. While we're starting to see some really cheap transaction fees, apps haven't quite hit that mass adoption point. We're waiting for those curves to intersect, you know, when everyone's using these L2S and the infrastructure can handle the load. And while some might argue that ETCC was all about infrastructure and lacked the sizzle of juicy new apps, Framework Ventures isn't letting those shiny dApps fade into the background. They're currently excited about games and weird consumer applications like PuffPaw, a vape to earn system on BearChain, helping people quit vaping. Now that's what I call a unique use case. But hey, don't forget about the infra. As Anderson puts it, we're always going to need bigger, faster, cheaper blockchains. So while Ethereum might not be facing an imminent killer anytime soon, we're definitely witnessing a fascinating evolution. Moving on, let's talk about Ethereum's Vibe Accession. It's a term coined by financial commentator Kyla Scanlon, and it describes a situation where everyone's feeling gloomy about the economy even though things are actually pretty good. Well, it seems like Ethereum is going through its own Vibe Session, with some folks questioning whether the ecosystem is truly on track for mass adoption. Is there enough excitement in the app space to justify all that venture capital flowing into infrastructure? The truth is, this isn't a new problem for crypto. It's always been a case of more blockchains than users. And while there's been a bit of L2 fatigue, we're seeing an explosion of new L2 networks. The problem is, each one has its own set of apps, leading to fragmentation of users and liquidity. But hold your tears, folks. This five session might not be a reflection of Ethereum's actual health. It's just that the number of people talking about Ethereum on Twitter has dropped by 80% since November 2022. Meanwhile, Solana is seeing a surge in Twitter activity, probably thanks to its connection to Sam Bankman-Fried and the subsequent fallout from FTX. Another telling metric is Ethereum's NV tweet ratio, which compares social media activity to market cap. Ethereum's NV tweet ratio is actually higher than Bitcoin's, which means that Ethereum's market cap is growing faster than its Twitter mentions. This could indicate less retail involvement in Ethereum markets and more institutional trading. So, while it's tempting to jump on the Ethereum is dying bandwagon, I'd say it's too early to write it off. It's just a phase, and who knows what the next big app or use case will be. Now, let's get into some other exciting news. We've got a Goldilocks scenario for Bitcoin miners, according to Bernstein. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, is sitting on a whopping $10.6 trillion in assets, and former Chainalysis chief economist Philip Gradwell has joined Tether as its head of economics. Digital asset investment products saw $1.44 billion in inflows last week, with Bitcoin seeing the fifth largest weekly inflows on record. And speaking of Bitcoin, it surged to $62,000 after the attempted assassination of Donald Trump. Some analysts believe this surge is driven by a combination of strong ETF flows and the safe haven effect. It's a classic case of buy the rumor, sell the news. The market is reacting to the uncertainty surrounding Trump's future, but it's hard to say for sure what the long-term implications will be. And finally, let's not forget about those pesky mem coins. Mog has entered CoinGecko's top 100 and is currently its best performer, surging 52% in the last week. So there you have it, folks. It's been another busy week in the crypto world. But remember, the journey doesn't end here. Stay informed, stay curious, and always do your own research. And if you want to learn more, invest and earn money together with successful crypto traders. Copy trades and earn money.
Click the link in the video description to get started. Don't forget to subscribe to Bitspools, give this video a thumbs up, and let me know what you think in the comments. Until next time, stay safe, stay informed, and keep those wallets fat. Peace out!